in Baton Rouge four years ago. One of the best places in America to watch college football. Willie on a hot Saturday. Troy won the toss and deferred South Carolina to receive. Going left to right, Brooks Boos, the former Georgia Bulldog, will kick things deep. Juju McDowell waiting back there. And the Gamecocks will start at the 25-yard line. Luke Doty, the sophomore from Myrtle Beach High School, over there on the Atlantic Ocean, missed the first couple of games with a mild foot strain in his left foot that he sustained in the middle of August. But he's looked pretty good the last couple of weeks as he becomes the leader of this South Carolina offense. You know, and a guy that's still recovering from that foot injury. They said that he's been dealing with a little bit of pain, hence a more abbreviated role as a runner in the offense so far. Be interesting to see how he feels with that foot today. Throwing on first down, and it's behind his intended receiver, Nick Muse, but a flag comes in. Alex Moore, today's referee. Wow. Hands to the face, offense number 71. The penalties have to distance to the goal. We play first down. And that's the big senior center, Eric Douglas. It's been an issue this year so far. Offensive line play. Right there towards the end, you know, as he's trying to ride right around the edge. Of Elgin Griffin trying to keep his quarterback clean. Got those hands a little bit high. Bell goes in motion as the Gamecocks are now snapping this from back near their 13-yard line. Doty throws the deep ball over the head of Bell. Closer to it was Reddy Stewart, the defensive back, at second down. Definitely different pages that time on a downfield pass from Luke Doty. And looking at his passing numbers, you know, 17 to 25 last week, 158 yards. Opportunity there with a big target and Bell downfield and was just thrown to the outside shoulder and clear miscommunication between he and Bell on the route. Kevin Harris with the first carry of the game and he follows the right side of the line and gets past the 20 up to the 22 yard line. Last week, South Carolina just had 58 yards rushing with the four different horses they use in the backfield. Marshawn Lloyd, Zaquandre White, Juju McDowell, and that man, Kevin Harris. To help out Doty, you gotta get that ground game going. Well, last week, you know, you're rushing for about 58 yards. That isn't it. It's part of the reason why South Carolina was only able to snap the ball offensively 51 times. You have to have that element. You know you're not going to get much of it from your quarterback position. They need to get to the 35. Doty steps up, throws a dangerous pass, but it's caught by Jalen Brooks. And Brooks is right at the first down marker. It's enough to move the chains. We well, talk about Doty and his mobility, but that time clearly mobile enough to scramble to throw. A year ago it was scramble to run. That time did a good job of finding Jalen Brooks downfield. He just showed him his numbers to get the conversion. Just in front of Elijah Culp, the defensive back. Good protection for him, and he throws a great ball this time to, to carry on Joyner in Detroit territory down to the 41. It's a pickup of 24. Nice, clean pocket to throw into. That time Troy came with four rushers. And DeCarry and Joyner just able to find a soft spot in the zone right there in the middle of the football field. You notice Brooks and Joyner getting uh, getting receptions already. Josh Van is a bit banged up, will play, but may not be featured as much today as he's been in the first four games. Down inside to Brooks, who tried to get a step on Culp, but a good play by Culp there at second down. Elijah Culp, a true freshman corner for this Troy defense. Gave up a big play early versus Louisiana Monroe last week. And on the same drive, ended up giving up a touchdown throw. And talking with their defensive coordinator, Brandon Hall, they indicated might be our most 
athletic defender, but a guy that has to learn how to play on bigger stages. Certainly a tough matchup with the length of Jalen Brooks. Fake to Harris. Stody stands tall and across the middle. Nice ball completed to E.J. Jenkins for 12 yards and a first down. Yeah, you mentioned the injury to Josh Van, and now they're having to spread this football around to other receivers, get other guys involved. That time, nice hands catch right over the middle, a contested throw, and a nice reception. Redshirt senior Jenkins forced into duty today. Juju McDowell is going in motion out of the backfield. And now comes back and takes the toss. And he's got great lateral speed. Otherwise, that play would have been doomed for about five or six yard loss. KJ Robertson on the tackle. Yeah, they had a bust at left tackle by Ja'Kai Moore. If he picks up Carlton Marshall, who ended up getting upfield right now, then that allows McDowell to run clean to the perimeter. Instead, he has to belly that run, lose ground a little bit. And that was more than enough to keep South Carolina from getting to the edge. Now tosses it over to Juju, and Juju gets down to the 21-yard line where he's tackled by Kyle Nixon. It's a pickup of eight yards. Going back to what you said, Stinch, the left side of the line has been the problem for South Carolina so far this season. You said it, Ja'Kai Moore starting at left tackle today instead of Jasden Turnatine, and Vershawn Lee is starting at left guard instead of Jalen Nichols. Now in the third and two, it's Harris. Goes straight ahead and he's right near the first down marker. A different look in the offensive backfield that time. carry and Joyner, who was in there, made the great catch over the middle that time. In at QB. Obviously came to South Carolina as a quarterback out of high school, made the switch to wide receiver. You can see South Carolina early giving a different look to this Troy defense on a third down. And only three of seven on fourth down. Shane Beamer's over there talking to an official, but looks like he's going to walk away and let his team go for it. See him looking over the side. That time Troy was showing inside pressure. Looked like they were looking to bring Carlton Marshall, both linebackers. Harris, first down South Carolina. Running left that time behind Vershawn Lee. We talked about that left side, kind of retooled, new faces over there. Clean enough to get the first down. You see Troy with penetration again, but on a short yardage play. But Kevin Harris is a good, he's got a good nose for that line of game. You said it clean enough, but slow developing there to barely move the chains. South Carolina, six of 11 scoring touchdowns in the red zone this season inside the 20 on the first possession of the game the 11th play of the drive and look at this wide open space Doty perfect ball to Bell and he's upended near the five yard line where it'll be first and goal so early on South Carolina accomplishing a couple of their goals one was to get the ball to Bell in the offense tried it a couple of times get it to him here the other was to get to carry on Joyner some touches. He's done so at quarterback and receiver already. That time, Kevin Harris and Marshawn Lloyd lining up in the same offensive backfield. The motion was to the left, drew the defense's attention away from that rollout. It's just Lloyd back there on a first and goal. Doty rolls to the right again. Will tuck it, will run, and he's out of bounds. Near the four, nice pursuit by Carlton Marshall, the all-world Mike linebacker for Troy, who was questionable coming into the game, but as the coaches said, you'll have to take his jersey away if he's not going to play. A gamer, guy that just loves to play football. He and Jaden McDonald both doing a great job of stringing out that rollout by Luke Doty. And I have to think that a foot injury ago, Luke Doty, Probably at least picks up another three or four yards if doesn't, if not get into the end zone. Instead, Troy does a good job of stringing it out and making a play. Lloyd is back there again. Doty one-on-one -on -one ball. That's a dangerous ball. And Josh Van really played defensive back more than he played receiver to keep that away from Elijah Culp. 
That ball's got to be outside. So that's two that we've seen in this game from Luke Doty where he's been off target. Something that they've been pleased with is how he's developed as a passer. That time, that ball needs to be on the outside shoulder for Van to make a play away from the defender. Third and goal from the five. Stinch, the Gamecocks have only scored three touchdowns in the last 38 drives. Important to get six here to instill some confidence in this offense. Low snap, Doty. Time to throw over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Ortre Smith. Reddy Stewart had him covered up. It's fourth down. A great job by this Troy defense to find a way to get a stop. Kind of rock back on your heels in the opening drive. South Carolina marches, down, marches it down the football field, gets a fourth down conversion, which can be deflating. The Troy defense finds a way to bow its net to force this field goal attempt. Well, and this guy's been the MVP of the offense so far, which is good and bad. You want your kicker to be as accurate as Parker White has been, but you want that offense to stay on the field. And White remains perfect now, 7 of 7 on the season, kicking field goals. 15-play drive for Shane Beamer's offense results in three points. here is it plenty of sandstorm throughout the game at williams bryce stadium on a little bit of a steamy saturday stench in october we hot, thought man. you know fall would be creeping in here not yet but we're not complaining it's beautiful here in columbia today gamecocks come in at two and two on the season so does troy two teams trying to get a rhythm going after the first month of the season, Mitch Jeter, the kickoff specialist, will kick it deep to Marquise Colvin. And Chip Lindsay's offense will come out to the 25-yard line. So we were talking about South Carolina struggling on offense stench. Same story for Troy so far this year and quarterback Taylor Powell still looking for their groove in game number five. Yeah, big difference year over year. Last year it was the defense that was a problem. Offense did well. This year, offensively, they've struggled. And Chip Lindsey said, look, I spent more time trying to emphasize the run game. I wanted to help complement my defense. And instead, they've kind of been stagnant offensively this year. Looking to open things up they have here with their personnel. Just a back, no tight ends in the formation. Powell's been a bit banged up so far this season. Stands in there, and it's incomplete. Nice coverage there by Cam Smith. He's been the top cover corner. That's his fifth PBU of the year. They seem high on Cam Smith. And this is the secondary that's been well-documented, retooled, new faces. A lot of guys that are needing and having to step up. Cam Smith, he's an experienced football player. He's a guy that they are counting on in coverage to step up his game even more. Handoff goes to B.J. Smith, and Smith won't get much. Brad Johnson on the tackle. Kamani Vidal, the top tailback for Troy, is banged up today, nursing a foot issue. Vidal, by far, Troy's leading ground gainer, so Chip Lindsey has to go to the bullpen with Smith, Jamontez Woods, and others. It's third and ten for Troy. I see South Carolina showing some pressure from the field. Paylor, Powell goes sidearm, and R.J. Roderick was right there on Smith. That's a quick three and out for Troy. A couple of really nice plays by the South Carolina defense that are encouraging based on what they did last week. Some gap integrity problems, meaning... Defenders just not playing their role versus the run game. That time, Brad Johnson makes a nice play. Then R.J. Roderick, a guy who they say is playing at a very high level with that quick trigger to get upfield and make the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Luke Magliozzi will kick for Troy. Marion Brown is back deep for South Carolina. Barely got that one off, and Brown fields it at the 35-yard line, and he's tripped up right there. And that's where the Gamecocks will start on offense. The defense with new defensive coordinator Clayton White.
has looked terrific in the first month of the season. R.J. Roderick and the Gamecocks up three and have the football back. Dari, we can't wait to continue to hear from you throughout the afternoon. No score there with Ole Miss and Alabama early. Not surprised Lane Kiffin went for it, though. He didn't come to Tuscaloosa to kick field goals today. Did I hear Dari correctly? How many times did they go for it on fourth down? Three times, I think he said. Three times. Boy, is that what the analytics say? Left the kicker and punter back in Oxford, evidently. Parker White is here in South Carolina, kicked a field goal on their longest drive in terms of plays so far this season. The first time they had it, 15 plays. As Juju McDowell will get a couple up to the 36. Uh, last drive, they were able to overcome that illegal hands to the face, dug a hole early in the drive, overcame it, converted on a fourth down. You know, not making it easy on themselves. You know, they faced three third downs already in the game. Had to convert that fourth to extend the previous drive. Doty finds the open receiver. It's Nick Muse, the tight end in Detroit territory to pick up a 15. You know, early on, South Carolina doing a much better job in protection. Clean pocket, room to throw. Sees downfield, finds a target in Nick Muse, who really emerged last year offensively for South Carolina. And talking with the coaches, they said, yeah, we want to get him going. The problem is we've had to leave him in to help in protection. That time, out in the route for a nice play. Six different completions to six different receivers for Luke Doty, and not one of them is named Josh Mann. Doty now, play action, steps into the throw, and it's over the head of Muse. Went to him consecutive plays. Nice coverage by Craig Slocum, second down. And had him. He had him downfield. And once again, we've seen it where Luke Doty has just been off a bit with some of his downfield passing. You know, even on some of the completions on the previous drive, a little bit later behind as you're going to get an illegal substitution. Legal substitution. Offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. This is the kind of stuff you see Shane Beamer. He's just exasperated over there, as is Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator. But these are the types of penalties you just can't have. It's procedural. you got to keep those clean, especially when you're an offense that's trying to establish some rhythm. You take a shot on first down, you miss, and then you dig yourself a hole to make it second to 15. Juju McDowell makes a man miss. Flag comes in as he's tackled at the 46. You know, back him up even further. A holding penalty. I believe it's going to be on Xavier Leggett. Holding. Offense number 17. 10 yard penalty. Still second down. The worst thing you can do. Uh, and take it from a guy who's never held but has been called for holding. <laughs> the worst thing you can ever do is throw your hands up as a blocker as if you didn't do anything because it's a surefire confession. You're begging the officials to pay greater attention to what it was that you just did. We like to be fair and objective on this broadcast. And Stinch has confirmed it is an actual fact that he never held during his All-American career at the University of Georgia. Second and 25 for Doty, and he finds an open receiver for a first down. Jaheim Bell, all the way inside the 40, picks up 26. Right now, South Carolina victimizing the Troy defense over the middle. They're playing two safeties out. You see, get right behind the, the linebacker level, but in front of the safeties. That time, Marquise Colvin, could not trigger quickly enough from his safety position. And Jaheim Bell now, once again, asserting himself in the passing game. You see their points of emphasis, and so far so good for South Carolina as far as getting the ball to some of their playmakers. 
Doty, quick throw to the sideline, and Amarian Brown is covered up. It's going to be a loss of a couple on the play as Robertson makes the tackle. Going back to Jaheim Bell, he's a problem for the other side. Not only can he catch those passes 20, 30 yards down the field, he also can run it a bit, too. He had a 65-yard touchdown run called back a few weeks ago. Can use him in all parts of the offense. Second and 12, Doty. Good ball this time to Joyner. And he's inside the 35 where Stewart makes the tackle. It'll be third down. You set it with Bell, guys. They can be versatile, play multiple roles in the offense. You see Doty, they're, they're hoping to get him kind of settled into a rhythm, knowing that a big part of his game is the ability to run the football. You don't see quarterback called runs very often. There have been a couple of reads that he's missed, and you wonder how much of a role that's played as far as his decision making. Once again, Lloyd and Harris in the backfield together. Shane Beamer wants to call timeout. Didn't like how slow that play developed. Yeah, charge timeout of the half. South Carolina. Gamecocks have struggled on third down, trying to convert here in just a moment. Well, it's been an adventure. That quarterback, obviously, former grad assistant, now quarterback Zeb Nolan stepped in for the first two games and did so somewhat admirably. The guy that was cutting film, next thing you know, he's. He's on the film, but got injured versus Georgia, forced Luke Doty into service probably earlier than they would have wanted him out there, and he was rusty. There's no doubt about it. Struggled last week versus Kentucky. Trying to get him off to a good start here. Needs to step into those throws on that injured left foot. This is a third and five. Instead, he goes straight ahead with Marshawn Lloyd, and Lloyd is nowhere close to that first down. Jordan Anthony coming up to make the tackle. It's fourth down. Now Parker White kicked a career long 54 yarder last week, but this could be no man's land stench. In other words, four down territory. Yeah, another negative yardage play. Third of the game by Troy, one of the best in the country at this. As you see South Carolina saying, look, we rolled the dice last time on fourth down, got it. Trying to capitalize again here. Stepping into the throw, but dropped by Joyner. And that time, Doty couldn't have put a better ball on Dakari and Joyner. Watch this ball. And you see Joyner just kind of short-armed it a little bit. Could probably feel the safety coming downhill on him. Knew he was probably going to take a big shot. Short-armed it just a little bit. On fourth down, you're trusting your defense if you're Shane Beamer. And as you mentioned, you know, the, down, the yardage there, you know, it's kind of a, a no man's land of sort, an opportunity to convert, and Troy gets the stop. Powell in the Troy offense did nothing the last time they were on the field. Over the top of the defense, but Reggie Todd couldn't bring it in. Second down. Uh, we talk about South Carolina trying to get some guys in there. Reggie Todd's got to get some more looks for the Troy offense. A guy that's got good length, you can see there, it's 6'5". If he gets a step on you, that's a huge catch radius. Still that time, Taylor Powell overshooting his mark. As you can tell, looking to emphasize a playmaker out wide. Another fake, and it's Todd again. Todd wants a flag thrown. Won't get it. It was definitely a physical rep. I don't know. I don't know. How, I'm surprised that a flag did not come out on Darius Rush. Oh, yeah. I mean, he had a handful of that near shoulder. Head linesman's got a good look at it. I'm surprised that a flag didn't come out. Maybe we're going to let him play a little bit on the outside. Powell off his back foot. It's complete to Tez Johnson. It's a gain of 12, and it's Troy's first first down. Yeah, that time, Troy did a good job in blitz pickup. South Carolina brought six blitzers. 
Powell able to find the inside slot receiver right where the field pressure was coming from. But he was afforded time to do that. Able to hit his mark to get the conversion. Whittemore and Johnson come near the tackle and guard, and it's a handoff to B.J. Smith, and Smith gets into Gamecock's territory where Jalen Foster makes the tackle. I saw a couple of run fits versus Kentucky that were problematic. You got an inside linebacker and Brad Johnson, former outside linebacker, edge player, still learning that role a little bit. He got hung up in the wash that time. And Troy able to crease the middle of the Carolina defense. Pickup of nine. Powell, the first down throw inside the 40 to Johnson. Tez Johnson, he's their big playmaker, guy that has emerged. 24 receptions coming into this game, heavily targeted. He was all alone on the right side of the formation. An easy pitch, pitch and catch for a conversion. Second in the Sun Belt so far this season with total catches. Pocket collapses on Taylor Powell there. As the sack goes to Zach Pickens, the big junior from Anderson, South Carolina. Yeah, Pickens will get the credit, but this sack was created by Kingsley Anikbari off the edge. As you can see, Powell, he had to press up in the pocket. Watch him at the bottom of his drop. He feels that pressure from the right side. He presses up right into Zach Pickens. The big fella might have gotten the sack anyway. Who knows? Certainly helped his cause. Good job of collapsing the pocket inside out and running the edge on the outside by Enigbari and Pickens there. Loss of five on the play. Now you're 10 plus, the South Carolina showing pressure. Smith makes one man miss and spins up to the 36 yard line where Cam Smith makes the tackle. It's third down. How about that C button? The spin move from BJ Smith. You get it to third and more manageable here. Now the question will be, can South Carolina get home? Can they just get there with their four down linemen to pressure the passer? Do the kids know what the C button is? That's a good point. That's an old school controller button. It's probably like a triangle or something now. All right, the South Carolina defense trying to get off the field as Shane Beamer is fired up with his team up three. Coming up at 7 Eastern, number 15, Texas A&M takes on Mississippi State in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Looking forward to Tommy Hart. Jordan Rogers and Cole Kublik on the call for that one. Kyle Field on a Saturday night. Such a great spot to be. That SEC voices, SEC oh, story great, was it? so good. Yeah. Jack Crystal, Mississippi State, longtime voice featured in that one. Third and eight for Troy in Gamecocks territory, and they run it, and it's Smith who gets free and into the end zone. 35-yard touchdown for the senior from Alabama. Great job on the left side of that Troy offensive front. And South Carolina accommodated them on the second level. The linebackers collapsing towards the interior portion and just opened up a huge hole on the left side. Brooks Boos makes it seven to three. B.J. Smith was the guy for Troy. He had three straight 100-yard season uh, games back in 2018. He's overcome a bunch of injuries. Sure looks healthy now. The Troy Trojans have the lead on the Gamecocks in the second quarter in Columbia. So watch the left side of this play. This is the touchdown run. Damani Staley at linebacker. And he ends up reading something that pulls him inside. You don't even need to block at this point. You see the hole that's created just by his floating inside like that. 
That's what? A seven-yard wide hole, and you haven't even had to block anybody at the second level. You just take care of the line of scrimmage, and because of a misread, misplayed at the second level, and next thing you know, you've got a touchdown run going the other way. It's those run fits that were an issue last week for the Carolina D. Juju McDowell coming out, and he's out to the 30-yard line. Alyssa, it looks like the backup quarterback is coaching up the starting quarterback down there. Yeah, guys, it's been this way after every single offensive possession. Oftentimes, Zeb Noland is the first one to Luke Doty, talking him through what needs to be happening. Then he goes over to the O-line, coaches them up a little bit. I've seen him talking a lot with Eric Douglas, the center. Then he goes over to the wide receivers, and he kind of follows Shane Beamer around from position group to position group, making sure everybody's on the same page, and he sticks tight next to Luke Doty on the sidelines he didn't come here to play he came here to coach <laughs> and then he was pressed into action as stench said in those first couple of games toss ahead to brooks and jalen look at that hard physical running gets him ahead past the 35 a pickup of six transfer from wingate college and a guy that Coming into this game, had the same number of targets 24 times in the past game as Josh Van, a guy that they tried to get the ball to with less amount of success. That's an easy way to get him a touch. Doty dumps it off underneath, and it's dropped. Carlton Marshall came in there and provided the big hit third down. They're looking to get the ball right at the sticks. Nowhere to go with this football. And watch Marshall. How about a physical end to this play? And a chance to come up with that reception, but the hit alone separating receiver, in this instance, Kevin Harris, from the football. And Carlton Marshall, just a ball playing Jesse there at linebacker. I love that. Junior from Mobile, Alabama, number one in the nation in tackles per game so far this season. Third down, you see Troy showing pressure right up the middle. Doty faces it, drops it off, and it's a first down for Harris in Detroit territory. The screen game moves the chains and gives the Gamecocks some momentum. It's a pickup of 30. So they're showing pressure, but they ended up bailing out, but everyone had committed to the interior part. So you lead Kevin Harris out. It was perfect. What a perfect play call. It timed out great. To get the ball to Kevin Harris, back-to-back -back targets. The previous time was just a check down right over the middle, and instead this time, the perfect call versus the defense and the pressure look. Doty steps up. What a muddy pocket. And he just runs into a couple of Troy defensive linemen. Richard, Richard Jubinor, the transfer from Auburn, was there. Really the first time where it seemed like the pressure influenced Doty. This time at the bottom of his drop, it started out wide, but Juvenile was running the arc, had Doty flush up. And, you know, he's been scrambling to throw. That time you would think if he felt more confident on that foot, he just takes off running and instead made a negative yardage play to make it 10-plus. Lloyd. Inside the 35, down to the 34-yard line where Marshall is again. Lloyd was the guy that the Gamecocks expected to be the next great Gamecock tailback, a five-star recruit from DeMatha High School. He had a serious knee injury stench on his second day of college yeah. last year, and he's still trying to find his groove. Yeah, it still doesn't. He just still doesn't look comfortable on that knee yet. Doesn't have a lot of pop. And now on the third and 10 plus, the fifth third down attempt already for South Carolina in this game. Doty under pressure, dumps it off, and Harris is upended. What an open field tackle by Del Pettis, but there is a flag down. Interested to see what Coach Lindsey does here. Pettis 
makes that tackle. Do you hold it? Offense. To the other penalty. So go down. Yeah, and he does. He takes the penalty stench, so that way Parker White can't come on to attempt the yeah. long field goal. Yeah, playing field position, obviously, and of course, you know, you're sitting there saying you're you're sitting well, at number 55. Chikai Moore the, on the flag. Yeah. We talked about how active they are. All the negative yardage plays are starting to pile up now for Troy, and now a procedural penalty. False start, offense from the 55. Five yard penalty, still third down. Yeah. You mentioned Jaston Turnatine last game. Number 75, and he subbed in for Ja'Kai Moore. He struggled versus Kentucky. Back to back penalties. Get your quarterback hit and a procedural penalty at home. It's just inexcusable. When you look at it so far, Troy playing a clean game. Five flags already for South Carolina. Three of them on this drive alone. Now the Gamecocks need about 15 yards to give White a shot. Doty takes a shot and it's incomplete as the pressure was applied by Jaden McDonald. And the Gamecocks will have to punt it away. Jade McDonald's put himself together a pretty good football game early. And once again, that pressure getting home. We talked about it in the open. This defense will knock you backwards. If you get in a third and obvious passing downs and South Carolina's find themselves there a couple of times, they are excellent. They're quick up front. They don't have great size, but they can get in your backfield. Kai Kroger just barely got it off, and there's a flag down at the 10 yard line. Now, is this running into or roughing? as Kroger took a big shot from Charles Strong. Narrowly missed blocking this football. I'm actually surprised he didn't get a piece of it. Running to the kicker, defense. That penalty is declined. The Delta play the first round. It's obviously the home crowd wanted it to be roughing the kicker. You see, kicking the point of that football. He was bringing his leg down already, running into the kickers. Good call by the officials. Kroger did a good job of trying to sell it. I'm surprised that ball didn't get blocked. They came after it. Gamecocks trail Troy seven to three in the second quarter. These guys, you see what's going on. How about number three, number six, and number nine all trailing right now as Jamontez Woods goes up to the 14 yard line. Cincinnati up 17 nothing on the Irish right now. Oregon in trouble on the farm, although it is a bit early, and Oklahoma seems to always have trouble in the Little Apple. I tell you, if Cincinnati wins that game for the first time ever, you got to legitimately look at a group of five team that could have a chance to get to the group of get to the college football playoff. Could have made that argument even a year ago. We hope to, to see that maybe perhaps this year's a little bit different. Got a couple of conferences opting out, it seems like, this year. And what are they doing? They're leaving the group of five to go to the Big 12 next year. Second and six. Great protection. All kinds of time. And Tez Johnson, the intended receiver, but a misfire by Powell, third down. That time, they leave protectors in there. Guys, just help block and keep Taylor Powell clean. A little bit out in front of his receiver. Full slide protection and really no pressure. We've seen South Carolina on third down, a similar third down and distance to go. They brought pressure with six. Troy was able to convert. They're showing two walked up linebackers now. Will they bring pressure? Can they get home with just their four rushers? Plenty of time again, and it's another good ball. Jabri Barber with the catch. It's a pickup of 16. Troy's three of four on third down. A beautiful pocket for Taylor Powell. Look at that. There's not a defender in sight. 
nice and clean. He's upright, working on a knee that didn't feel great coming into this game. And he throws a strike on third downs. South Carolina's got to find a way to affect the passer on these third and obvious passing downs. Fake to Billingsley and it's deflected at the line of scrimmage. Kingsley Inigbari got his hand on it, Alyssa. Yeah, guys, I, I wanted to add on this Troy offense because one of the things that Chip Lindsay told us on going into this game was getting them ready for the crowd noise. He said that because of last year and everything we went through, some of these players have never played in a stadium like this. Now, on that big third down a few moments ago, the student section right behind the Troy offense got pretty loud. He said we did plenty of noise sessions going into this one, but otherwise didn't make a huge deal out of it. Want to make sure we're cutting down on penalties. So far, that's looked pretty good. They've dealt with it very well so far procedurally. Zero penalties. Woods straight ahead running past the 35 for six. It'll be third and short. And this has been the problem for the Gamecocks. You've referenced the linebacker play so far. Gamecocks without Sherrod Green at the big injury against Georgia a couple of weeks ago. Troy already three of four on third down today. I remember earlier on a third down, they ended up getting a touchdown run out of it. They ran it on a third and eight. You see South Carolina once again with their linebackers up in the line of scrimmage. Facing pressure and down he goes. J.J. Inigbari again in the backfield, fourth down. Interesting alignment that time from South Carolina defensively. Inning Barry, one of those just stand up like a radar look. You take some of your big guys, walk them around. That time Inning Barry was in the interior defensive line. He came untouched, busted assignment somewhere along that offensive front. He was right in Taylor Powell's lap, and the pressure got home. Steve Fink, who does a great job in sports information, he said, call him Kingsley sometimes and call him JJ, his nickname. Sometimes he goes by both. Magliosi with a nice punt, plenty of hang time, and Brown couldn't get it. It's down at the 22 yard line, a 41 yard punt, no return. Gamecocks trailing at home. That's right, wasn't it? Welcome back to Columbia, South Carolina. I want to tell you guys about Taylor and Stinch's favorite show on television. It's out of pocket. It's on <laughs> SEC Network Wednesdays, 7 o'clock Eastern time. It's an hour of SEC goodness. Guys, this week I kicked some field goals with Parker White, who has a very good percentage that I will not jinx right now on the air. So that's coming up this Wednesday. Everybody is raving about this, about the job that Alyssa did this week. She was perfect. Evidently, anyone that graduated or currently kicks for South Carolina has been accurate so far this season. I know I had a running contest with her. I'm not going to kick against her. Juju McDowell goes past the 35-yard line. It's a first down catch for Juju for 13 yards. Parker's warming up. How about the leg on Lang that you saw there? in the highlights. He was inspired by her accuracy. <laughs> He's gracious. McDowell doesn't get anything this time. Bottled up, maybe lost a yard. Will Cholo in there on the tackle. And coming into this game, Troy fully anticipated South Carolina was going to try to run right at him. There is a distinct, significant size advantage Tackle the tackle for South Carolina, but they really haven't been able to get that downhill running game going. And they have been out of sorts so far when it comes to communication, especially with the offensive line. Offside, defense number 90, jumping into the neutral zone and causing a reaction by the offensive player. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Not their fault this time. That's the first penalty on Troy. Elgin Griffin was the one that made the Gamecocks flinch. And Coach Chip Lindsay was talking about that. It's uncharacteristic for us to be a heavily penalized team coming into this game. They had 10 penalties in both their previous two games. Played a big role last week in their loss to Louisiana Monroe. 
We haven't seen Josh Van do much. They've gone his way once so far in the game, not at 100%. Doty looked that way and then checks it down, and it's dropped by McDowell. Couple of drops here in the first half. You think about the carry and Joyner on what would have been a conversion on a fourth down and ends up resulting in a touchdown going the other way on the ensuing offensive drive. And you got to come up with that catch out in the flats with a lot of green grass in front of you. Another third and long. And see if Troy can get home. They're showing at least four rushes. Doty in stride to Van, and Josh turns it on into Troy territory. And he picked up a nice block by DeCarry and Joyner, who has figured prominently in a bunch of different ways for this Carolina offense already. So he ends up just hitting Van, dragging all the way across the formation. Matched up with a linebacker. Look at Joyner coming in there with the screen block. Didn't hit blindside block right there. Smart play by DeCarry and Joyner in a key moment from Josh Van. Van's averaging 23 yards a catch. He got 28 for his first grab of the game. Doty's already found nine different targets. Throws, and it's over the head of Bell, who is covered up. And Doty's just, he's a little hesitant. Because he had Bell, and he's late with this football. As you see, the last 41 drives, they only have the field goal today, one rushing touchdown all season. Three touchdowns and 41 drives offensively. Kevin Harris checks back in on the second and 10. And he goes straight ahead past the 30 and dives ahead. K.J. Robertson on the tackle. Harris led the SEC in rushing last year with over 1,100 yards, first team all SEC, but had surgery on his back in July. And kind of like Marshawn Lloyd, he's also trying to find his groove in 2021. Doty moves the pocket on the third and seven. Takes off, and he's a couple yards shy of the first down. Josh. John Hines yep. able to prevent the fourth. And no hesitancy. South Carolina gets right back out there. Jaheim Bell substituting right away. You see him quick over the ball. Didn't even discuss it. They were going for it right out of the gate. That third down call predicated this one. Harris first down. Marcus Satterfield is a play caller there. He had the green light. It's four down territory he had to have from his head coach. You roll it out, it's a run pass option, old school style, and then you get over the ball quickly and get downhill right now for a fourth down conversion. Harris again. And he plows ahead to the 16-yard line. We showed the graphic just a few moments ago. Three touchdowns in the last 41 trips. They've moved the football against Troy, but they just seem to have that stagnant moment each time they possess it. Well, and they've had to expend so much energy and effort to overcome their own mistakes. You know, they're having to generate yards because they're going backwards on some of these offensive snaps with all the penalties. It's the 10th play of the drive. Doty rolls out again, fires, it's caught, touchdown. What a grab by E.J. Jenkins. Parker White 
makes it 10-7. Jenkins, the transfer from St. Francis College with his 15th career touchdown. It's his first this season. South Carolina finally finds pay dirt after a long touchdown drought. Luke Doty and the Gamecocks up on Troy. Troy takes over at the 25 yard line. Got it done in the red zone with Luke Doty this last time, Stinch. Yeah, they rolled him right a couple of times on the previous play as well. This time, able to find a huge target, literally and figuratively, EJ Jenkins. Oh, 6'7", 250 pounds of him. Targeted him earlier in this game. See Doty throwing well on the run. That time on the drive, three or four for 57 yards. And you think that started the drive off with that drop pass out in the flats. It was a little bit low. Otherwise, he was able to regain his composure to put together a touchdown drive. B.J. Smith gets a yard. Brad Johnson on the tackle. Doty already with a career high in passing yards, and it's only the first half. He has 202. Well, and part of it's just been, you know, he's got to step up in the passing game. The rush yards just haven't gotten going. Only 35 on the ground versus an undersized defensive front in Troy. Toss ahead to Tez Johnson. Johnson tiptoes the sideline, but this one might be coming back. Holding, offense number 64. That penalty is declined, resulting in play third down. It's DeAndre Butler, the left guard. time South Carolina did a great job of just stringing it out but couldn't get on the outside and third down declined the penalty previous third down they got him off the field because they were able to get home with pressure up front that Enigbari kind of floating around along that defensive line this time Enigbari lined up at the end of the defensive line a stand up rusher at the top of your screen Powell does it again, and a flag comes in. Caught by Reggie Todd. If it stands, it'll be the 28th straight game. Todd's caught a pass. Reggie Todd was First a guy. First foul, face mask, defense number 24. This is a 15-yard penalty enforcing the previous spot with an automatic first down. It's Marcellus Dial, the sophomore. Hey, I mean, insult to injury on that one. When you give up the yard, it's needed to convert. Pressure doesn't get there, and then you concede what's effectively another first down and a half after that. We talk about trying to close out the half. You got three minutes to play on a third and long. Not only do you concede the completion, but the penalty yardage just killing South Carolina here in the first half. The chains a little bit slow getting reset. They're a little bit slow changing the down marker as well. When South Carolina declined that penalty, they were stuck on second down there for, for a bit. This age of technology, it always makes me shake my head as I watch these two guys moving this chain that they've been moving for decades and decades in college football. Those guys are doing their job, no question. B.J. Smith, not much. Jordan Strawn 
comes in there, and so does Jalen Foster. And let's take a look at today's player spotlight brought to you by Liberty Mutual. It's on Jalen Foster. What a start to the season, Stinch. He's tied with Verone McKinley of Oregon for the national lead in interceptions. Four picks, leading tackler for South Carolina was in on that tackle. Right around the line of scrimmage, they say he's been invaluable. He represents everything they're trying to instill in this program under the new leadership of Shane Beamer. Powell gets rid of it quickly. Nice turn around by Tez Johnson to get the first down. Great run after catch by Tez Johnson. So much ground was seeded by Cam Smith. So when he triggers up, he's trying to make that play in space. Instead, he just gets spun around. The adopted brother of Bo Nix, the Auburn quarterback. David Spaulding, rather, forgive me. Tez runs around again, watch out. Trickeration here. Instead, taking off is Reggie Todd, and he steps out of bounds after close to a 10-yard pickup. Oh, he had it. It was there. He pulled it down just at the last second. If he just uncorks that pass, he's got an opportunity to get it to his true freshman tight end, Lewis, who was behind the coverage. Instead, still able to convert. Get a fresh set of downs. Todd used to play for Dan Mullen at Mississippi State. Transferred to Troy a couple of years ago. Powell as Todd down there and just out of his reach. Jalen Foster in coverage at second down. Nice coverage that time, Jalen Foster. He's given up size big time to Reggie Todd, about seven inches. He's underneath this throw. That ball is just a little bit too deep for Todd. I mean, you can see trying to get more and more looks for him downfield. Got the old pylon cam coming in handy for that look. Powell, shovel pass, lets the defense free. And it's Smith who goes inside the 25 down to the 24. How about that? That's a couple of times where we've seen these play callers dial up, shovel pass, screen pass earlier by South Carolina versus a pressure look. It's an ideal play call right in the teeth of that blitz. If you're underneath it, pick up yet another first down. Now hands it to Smith. And when they've done it conventionally, it hasn't gotten much on this drive. MJ Webb with the tackle. Timeout, Troy. Their first of the half. 30 seconds. Please reset the game clock to 40. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the mighty sound of the Southeast on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. I think those guys are, and girls are a little hot. Yeah, they weren't counting on it. There's no way. We were just talking about it. You said we don't want to complain. I'll complain. It's too hot for October, man. We've already gotten in there. It's supposed to be about 10 degrees cooler. Our terrific spotter, Russ Moore, was in the Million Dollar Band in Tuscaloosa. What was he saying that his uniform was made out of? Wool? Made out of like burlap sacks or something. <laughs> it's like it was made out of like insulated flannel. It's close to 90 degrees. Why? Yeah, you look at those are good looking unis, but man, I hope they're made out of like dry fit or something that breathes. Troy will get the second half kickoff. Keep that in mind with just 46 ticks left in this half. Powell's in trouble. He goes down, and here comes a flag in as Inigbari got to Powell. Holding, offense number 85. 10 yard penalty, still second down. Deuncre Lewis tried to keep Inigbari away and still couldn't. It's tough duty right here for Lewis. Coming all the way across the formation versus one of the better pass rushers in the conference, certainly for South Carolina. And Inigbari still able to get home. You see him smiling. It's an understatement to say a big penalty because you're thinking now, even though it's second down again, bump them out, 
into the field goal fringe. Well, and Brooks Boos has only kicked one field goal on the year, so Troy might be in four down territory instead of three. Powell too tall, it's picked off. Scampering the other way come the Gamecocks. A pick six, 75 yards for David Spaulding. Maybe the brightest spot of the season for South Carolina defensively, takeaways. First in the conference coming into this game with 10. None of them bigger than this one by David Spalding. Pressure. Aaron throw. Trying to get in the edge of tie. It looks like again Spalding is right underneath it. I don't think Powell even saw him. Spalding picks it cleanly and takes it to the house. A pass rush, the penalty backs up Troy, and the Carolina defense able to capitalize their eighth interception of the season, tops in the conference and fifth in all the FBS. And it's their third pick six. It's the first by defensive back. Staley had one against East Carolina. Birch had one against Eastern Illinois. And now David Spaulding gets in the action too. This is a secondary that lost J.C. Horn, a top 10 pick to the Panthers. Israel Mukwamu's in the NFL now. Three defensive backs transferred. A lot of transition, yet these new guys are getting a hold of the football. You see that triggering up field quickly. I mentioned David Spaulding earlier. The completion out in the flats, and he just did a great job of spinning out of the would-be tackle. Did Tess Johnson got up field, got a first down. David Spaulding. More than making up for that play with a pick and a touchdown going the other direction for South Carolina's defense. You're looking at it right there at the end of half. You're leaking yards, play clock eking down, a couple of championship rushes from Kingsley and Igbari. He pushed the left tackle right into the lap of Taylor Powell before that throw. Colvin at the four. Gets out almost to the 30. Tonight, SEC football final is back, hosted by Dari Noka with Gene Chizik and Chris Doring. They'll take you through the biggest stories of the day and break all the games down. 10 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. A lot to talk about tonight. LSU Auburn with a late kick in Baton Rouge at eight local time. Florida and Kentucky at six Eastern and the tide rolling on the Rebels who haven't scored a point in the first half in Tuscaloosa. Smith gets a couple. Man, that throw picked off by Spalding changes everything. It's 10-7 South Carolina. Troy looks like they're about to score and get the football first in the second half. Instead, they go to the locker room down 10. Just a monumental swing of events right there towards the end of the first half. In South Carolina, you get to go into the locker room feeling much better about the last offensive drive and a defense that comes up with a big stop. Changes your mindset. Chip Lindsey, he's got to feel good about the way his team played in the first half. But you have to regret, lament the way that thing ended for Troy, they got to find a way to regroup before they take the first possession in the third quarter. 11 forced turnovers on the season so far for South Carolina and Shane Beamer, and he's with Alyssa. Coach, you talked about playing loose, playing free. Looked like David Spaulding was. What kind of momentum was that? Uh, is there a word that's bigger than huge? Because that was huge. Um, you know, we're playing well. We just. You sit there and you're like, you see the stats on the board and we're playing well. You know, we don't execute down here the first time down in the red zone or second time and, and go backwards when we're down there. 
you know, we knew they, they got a good team. We just got to keep playing, and that was a huge momentum thing. But we got to be a, bit, a good, mature team now and come out in the second half and, and build on what just happened. What will be the uh, emphasis to the offense at halftime? You know, we got to find some ways to run the ball. We knew they were a good defense coming in here, and we just got to keep wearing on them and, and keep leaning on them and being an SEC offensive line and SEC football team. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Creating that identity so important to Shane Beamer. Let's send it to the studio. Here's Dari, Chiz, and CD with the halftime report. Gamecocks up 10 as they get ready to start the second half here at williams Bryce Stadium on a hot Saturday here in early October. With Matt Stinchko, and Alyssa Lang, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Stinch, the Gamecocks were dominating the stat sheet, but they were in danger of losing the lead before the play that changed everything. Yeah, the momentum shifting, huge with that pick six, obviously, because you see Troy driving there towards the back end of the first half. The way things got going, though, for Troy, on the ground, a third and eight, huge opening to the left side of the line. South Carolina accommodating defensively on that one, but then Luke Doty, in the Carolina offense got going a little bit. Gamecocks get in the end zone with the touchdown throw to E.J. Jenkins. And then, of course, the aforementioned pick six by David Spaulding as Troy was driving to change the complexion of that first half. Up to the 25-yard line is where Troy will start the second half. And let's take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Sonos. We were talking about South Carolina dominating the stat sheet. Over 200 passing yards. Luke De Doty's already set a career high. It's that big turnover that Spalding got. The reason the Gamecocks are up 10. Penalties been a bit of an issue for South Carolina so far today. Yeah, remember that touchdown drive by Troy. They're on a short field after South Carolina did not convert on a fourth down. How does Troy get back in this after the big turnover? Smith gets five. Alyssa, what did Coach Lindsay have to say? Yeah, I chatted with him coming out of the tunnel at halftime. He said, you know, up until that last minute of the first half, I was feeling fine. I love our effort. I love the way we're fighting in this football game. I asked him specifically what he wants to see from this offense in the second half. He said, we got to do a better job of getting the ball to Reggie Todd and Tez Johnson and winning some of those deep one-on-one -on -one matchups. Done a good job of that on third down today converting three of five times Powell the stri sidearm strike for a first down up to the 40 to the man that Alyssa just mentioned Tez Johnson for 10. Well, they like him as a playmaker you know, we've seen it not only solid route runner he's got steady hands a guy that they trust at receiver but can also get them yards after the catch and that time again well timed, nice in rhythm throw from Taylor Powell. When he's had a clean pocket, he's operated well in the passing game. Yeah, he can sling it even without setting his feet like he did on that play. As Smith will try the right side and get to the sideline for five. Powell's been a bit banged up, had a knee issue after the Louisiana Monroe game last week. Powell, who transferred in to Troy in January after being the backup quarterback to Connor Basilak at Mizzou last year. Like so many other guys that play in the SEC, they wanted a chance to go start somewhere else, and that's what Powell got. So they've been able to do that, though, so far today. Difficulty, especially driving the ball downfield. South Carolina's done a good job of keeping the ball in front of them. Powell drifts to the right and just has to throw it away. Facing pressure from Zach Pickens, and they're going to flag Pickens for knocking Powell to the ground. No, definitely pass. Personal foul, one for the passer, defense number six. This is a 15 yard penalty enforced from the previous spot with an automatic first down. And, it, and it's, he throws a flipper at him here at the last minute. He can pull up. Pull up. The ball's clearly out. 
You don't have to make contact right there. Was it especially violent? No. But they're going to call that. You're doing it right in front of the white hat. And once again, you talk about these penalties, right? Most of them on offense in the first half and now defensively conceding a first down with a face mask to continue the drive at the end of the second half. Give Powell credit for selling it yeah. too. Woods, first down run inside the 30. Well, so far in this half, just in this drive alone, Troy's done a great job on first down. These runs are picking up five yards, this time 10 yards. The ground game setting the stage for the second down plays. Under center is Powell. And he's in all kinds of trouble and just throws into the dirt. They're all over him again. Brad Johnson and Kingsley Inigbari. It's second down. No flag this time. Well, Inigbari knew it was a pass. You know, they come up, a heavy run set. Quarterback's under center, and they're going to try to run a heavy play action. Inigbari, he had his hand up, says, pass, pass. You see him, he beats two blocks. And The throw it right. the yeah. is there, I guess they're saying 85 was in the vicinity. Well, and, and Powell wanted another flag, but it was a continuation of the play. And, and Woods goes inside the 25 down to the 24 where Johnson makes the tackle. It'll set up another third down. And you can see what Chip Lindsey's thinking right there. You know, so three straight first downs. I run the football. We're getting yards. Five, five, ten yards. Now we're in the red zone fringe. Let's go play action. Now you set up a third and longer because of Enig Barry and the pressure they got early on the first down attempt. And keep in mind, it could be four down territory. Troy's kicker, Brooks Boos, has made one field goal from 32 yards away. Look at all the pressure, getting it off and caught inside the five. A.J. Lewis rides it down to the two got smashed by R.J. Roderick, and Powell gets it off for a completion. Well, the guts of Taylor Powell standing in there to take this shot. Personal foul, targeting, defense number 10. The previous play is on the front of the Well, we'll get another look at it. I don't know if it's targeting, but definitely Taylor Powell from the blind side. And he, he glanced over there. He saw it. It's hard to tell. I think the end zone copy gives us a better look to see. Yeah, there's contact to the head or neck area. He's using his face mask, but you're considered a defenseless player. So you don't have to use the crown of the helmet. It's anything. It doesn't even have to be the face mask or helmet. So they're showing a replay of it here in the stadium. But there was definite contact to the head and neck area of the passer right here. You don't need to go up high. This is what they're trying to change. Lower your target. Don't go up high on a passer. You're begging for a flag to come out as they review this play. But what a strike that Taylor Powell throws to A.J. Lewis. That's two, potentially, anyway penalties that have gifted Troy the gift of Troy yardage before it won't change the outcome of this play potentially lose a defender however a couple things to your point he doesn't have to leave his feet there Roderick after review the rolling of targeting is confirmed yeah that's the penalty the force half the distance to the goal and R.J. Roderick will miss the first half of the Tennessee game next week. It's, it's a huge blow to the South Carolina defense in this game as well. I mean, you're talking about a 10-point game going in with a first down. But this is not, it's not a new rule. And you had every opportunity to lower where you were going to make contact. Don't jump. Don't make contact with the passer. You explained you it perfectly. The and the fact that Powell is able to have a 22-yard completion and put Troy on the doorstep. This shows the guts that this guy's got. 
Now you challenge the defense. Two plays on the quarterback that have put them down, and Troy looking to capitalize. Powell tosses it easy walk in for Jamontez Woods. Impressive answer from Taylor Powell and Troy. Brooks Boost makes it a three-point game again. Eight plays, 75 yards. Jamontez Wood scores his third career touchdown. Taylor Powell with all sorts of guts leads the Trojans down the field and they're back in it. Back to williams Price Stadium in just a moment. R.J. Roderick tossed out of the game for targeting just a few moments ago, leading to the Troy touchdown. Again, Roderick will have to miss the first half of the Tennessee game next Saturday at noon Eastern on ESPN2 when the Gamecocks are in Knoxville. Jamar Brown taking Roderick's spot on the field. Gamecocks get it back up three. Stinch, let's go over this one more time. So look at the rule and the way it's defined, and it's not new. So that first arrow, see there's the dangerous hit involving launch, upward thrust, or severe strike. That launch or upward thrust, those are indicators. And there's no doubt that there was a launch there. And then the first bullet point, the forcible contact to the head or neck area. You launch, leaving your feet, forcible contact. You see Powell's helmet snapping to the right. It doesn't matter that Roderick makes contact with his helmet or not. You're making contact to a defenseless player to the head or neck area. That's going to be targeted. Doty on an end around to Van, and look at all that grass in front of him. Josh Van in Detroit territory. The Gamecock offense challenged to answer. The defense gives up a touchdown drive. Doty, Doty on an end around. How about this end around to Van? And keep in mind, Van's, that's not top end speed for Josh Van. You can tell. He's minus probably a gear. Missing that injury, but a big play regardless. 34 yards, longest play of the game for South Carolina. Now Doty, look at this pocket. There's nothing open, and he tosses it to Harris, who drops it. All day on that one, and... Towards the end, E.J. Jenkins was uncovering. He can only hold up for so long. And then once again, we see on a check down, just trying to hit it back out of the backfield. Not capable of getting a completion. If they do right there, he probably picks up a first down. Come on, boys! From the Troy 41. Fake the end around, and Harris doesn't get much. Jaden McDonald pushes him out. That time, Brandon Hall, defensive coordinator for Troy, had the perfect pressure from the boundary right into the point of attack for South Carolina, trying to get it out wide. South Carolina, another third and long scenario. And no van on the field, as you said, still dealing with a bit of a groin issue from last week's game against Kentucky. When they've given him the ball, he's produced, but as you suggested, a bit limited today. Doty, incomplete. Great play made by Tyon Palmer to prevent the first down strike to Jenkins. 
We had to play underneath this throw. Because if not, you're talking about there's no way you're going to get around that body of Jenkins. Great job of running underneath it, making the play, getting the breakup, and forcing the punt. Just Kroger's second punt of the game. And it's down at the two. About that. Yeah, great play in special teams. Brown's able to get down there right on the goal line to keep this ball because it's kicking into the end zone. That one's not checking up. That's a great play on special teams to help pick up your offense and defense as Troy came out smoking here in the second half. I didn't see that coming, Daria. Maybe a, a couple touchdown win for the Tide today, but Ole Miss with no points. Meanwhile, here, Troy in the fight, but back at their own two-yard line, and B.J. Smith gives them plenty of breathing room out past the 20. Well, a huge missed opportunity for the South Carolina defense right there. And Smith bounces this run all the way to the backside. He's all bottled up. They lose containment on the backside, and you see now in this third quarter, 75 yards on their first drive. They got an opportunity to put together a drive nearly the length of the field. B.J. Smith went over 2,000 career rushing yards with that run. He's got 85 today, and again, they're without their starting tailback, Kamani Vidal, is dealing with a foot issue. Smith past the 25. This half, Troy's done a great job on first down. Picking up five yards, picking up five yards, converting on the ground, setting up the playbook as a play caller chip lindsey's got to be thrilled with that first down production here south carolina able to slow them down a bit on first down to keep it at second and eight give them some yardage to defend in the down and distance powell just throws it to the bench coming up at seven eastern number 15 texas a m takes on mississippi state in our sec Saturday night matchup. Kyle Field will be rocking as usual at 7 Eastern. Aggies and Bulldogs wearing very similar colors. You're not kidding. Wrapping in maroon and white. That could go either way. Just like these two teams. Yeah. Big third down. Able to convert last time. Revert resulted in a touchdown. Troy has hit all their licks on third downs. Powell somehow got it off, and it's a first down. How about the run after the catch by Reggie Todd to move the chains? But Jim Lindsay talked about Reggie Todd. They said, we got to have a big game out of him because he's physical. He's a guy that's an SEC type receiver. Started his career in an SEC school, missed tackles, yards after the catch. It was not cleanly blocked. They're trying to get it like a screen over there to the left side. There are plenty of Gamecock defenders in the vicinity. Couldn't get him to the ground. Powell pocket collapsing, and it's deflected. Second down. It's almost like Powell would like to fast forward to third down on each drive. Yeah, it feels like it, right? I mean, you think about it. They had a touchdown run on third down. They had the touchdown earlier. Third down conversion. You think these guys, have, they've hit a lick all game long in their third down conversions, even in third and long scenarios, finding ways to get the ball downfield. Right now, four or five passing on third downs. 
He had a 35-yard rush earlier. Smith's got nowhere to go. Jabari Ellis says hello. It's a loss of one. Talk about these negative yardage plays. So you win on first down. Then on second down, you get a negative yardage play to make it third and 10 plus. Great job by Jabari Ellis playing blocks and getting upfield quickly. Does Taylor Powell have the Gamecocks right where he wants them? This is asking a lot. Third and 11 this time needs to get it out to the 45. The South Carolina got great pressure right up the middle out of this foot before. Quick little screen, and this is bottled up. Deshaun Stoudemire got a few, but there were Gamecocks everywhere, fourth down. Well, they get to stop. You let Troy out of the gate. You had him backed up on their own goal line on the first run. You at least allow them to gain field position. In a lot of ways, if you're Chip Lindsey and Troy, you're saying that's a win. The field position battle, you give yourself a chance to back up your opponent by just working your way off of the goal line. It started with that big run by B.J. Smith on first down to start this possession. Another punt for Magliosi, and it's blocked. And it goes out of bounds inside the 20. Jamar Brown got the initial pressure, and the Gamecocks have a short field. Jamar Brown comes, came right in the middle of that punt protection. And he hits the personal protect, protector and drives him back into Maglioni. Ends up blocking the punt with his own personal protector. Yeah, glances off the back of Lewis. A.J. Lewis just gets worked right back into Maglioni's lap. Special teams play. Now, punt coverage. This time, punt return, punt block. Shane Beamer's his own man, but he's just like his dad when it comes to Beamer ball and the special teams as Marshawn Lloyd gets a couple. Shane was going crazy on the sideline after the third block punt of the season for the Gamecocks. Debo Williams had a couple against Eastern Illinois. And then Brown uses the other team's up back to block that one. Doty is under pressure and down he goes. The sack by Javon Solomon. That is Solomon's six and a half sack this year. His first of the day. They knew it could be a challenge. It's right up the middle. He just beats Eric Douglas right now, one on one. And what you got there, what they did, this is so smart. You take an edge rusher and you put him up against a guy who's not used to dealing with speed guys in the middle. The center, first thing you gotta do is snap the football. Great hands by Solomon. I'm not sure Douglas even touched him with his hands. And he pushes the Carolina, South Carolina defense back. Need some positive yardage here. Give Parker White a little breathing room. And to the sideline, it's Lloyd who can't grab it. More pressure, TJ Harris in the face of Doty. And now Parker White will come in for a long field goal. Wow, that was a great job by the Troy defense of forcing the Gamecock offense backwards. You get a stop, a rush for no gain on first down. Great pressure on second down. White with the extra year of eligibility has been perfect this year. He connected from 54 yards last week. This one from 47 right through Columbia. This guy has been sensational. He thought his collegiate career would end last year and he'd be trying out for NFL teams instead another year of college. And it's been a great one. Every single week.
week, our crew eats like a champion. And being from Columbia, living in Columbia, you know Andy's Deli very well. Andy was always the voice greeting you when you walked in for a sandwich. Sadly, he passed away earlier this year, and it was a tragic loss for this Columbia community. His family, though, his sons and his wife, continue to run Andy's Deli, guys. The best sandwiches you can get in Columbia, but you have to get the special sauce, too. I just covered mine in, in special sauce. Colvin, he gets knocked to the ground short of the 20. What did, um, I got the astronaut, which is um, ham and turkey with Swiss with the special sauce that Alyssa was talking about. What'd you get? I got the Andy special, man. Whenever they name a sandwich after the guy who actually founded the deli, that's the one you go with. What's on there? Uh, roast beef, cheese, ham, I think. There's bacon involved, which you can't go wrong. That's the ultimate kind of see? Can you see why Alyssa is one of my best friends? I mean, no fear. Just, just brilliant. fearless. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Shotgun and the special sauce. Next level. Getting free is Jamontez Woods, and he has a first down up to the 29 yard line. It's a pickup of 12 on the play. Want me to land your astronaut sandwich over here? Yeah, we got a game Touchdown. here. I don't know, good piece of pizza there. She's eating like a champion. She sure is. Troy once again doing a great job. Ground game has been pacing this offense. Piled up 16 first downs already. Woods again. Upended after a few. Jalen Foster in there again. Foster tied for the lead in the country for interceptions. Also has been a tackling machine the last few weeks. He had 12 in the loss last week to Kentucky, and he's led the Gamecocks in tackles again today. Repeatedly done a great job of getting downhill and run support. But if you're Troy, you're all right with that production. Four-yard gain on first down. Already. Foster's ninth tackle. Second and six off the back foot. One on one ball picked off. Jamar Brown got it. Simply waiting to see if Brown brought that ball to his body and he did. And the Gamecock defense continues to swipe the football away from the opposition. It's been big plays. The pick six, now an interception here. Trying to get it to Reggie Todd. Reggie Todd, let that ball drop. You see Jamar Brown, looked like he controlled it before he rolled over this ball as he maintained possession through the catch. Watch as he comes to the ground here, Stench. Oh yeah, that's a catch. He might lose it there at the end. If anything, that would be a fumble. On the field is an interception. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, to me, it looks like he's got firm control of the football. Takes two steps, at least gets us two feet down. That's not to establish possession inbounds. And then when he went to the ground, lost it. But that was only after he would have possessed it. I think that this will stand as an interception that's a great job by jamar brown see firm control both hands bringing it to his body never jostles one two steps yep makes a football move that's an interception i'm with you and if it stands by the way this is the guy that just gets credit for blocking a punt yeah then he gets the interception and he's only in the game because rj Roderick got thrown out of the game for targeting that's a great point great point you talk about it earlier with R.J. Roderick coming in there, ill-advised. He's a key player in the secondary. You got to have a next man up mentality. You know, look at that ball is bouncing around. But by then, he would have already caught the ball. Come up, two hands firmly. That's possession there. One step, you turn, you make a football move. You're running. If anything, he's down. He caught that ball and was down. It wouldn't even be a fumble. It's an interception, knee on the ground. We might just be looking to establish where to spot the football, I guess. Well, let's see if Steve Landis, the replay official, agrees with you or he doesn't think he made 
enough of a football move. I, I don't really understand what they're looking at at this point. And they're moving the sticks back. Yeah. Alex Moore, the referee, talking to Steve Landis. And this could be a big overturn. After review, the ruling is an incomplete wow. pass. The defender did not survive the ground. The ball will be placed at the 32 yard line for the third down. Well, and, and if you remember that play with Des Bryant with the Dallas Cowboys a few years ago against the Packers, it was all about surviving the ground. And that's what yeah. Steve Landis, the replay official, is saying there. Said all I need to say on that one. That looks to me to be a catch. If that isn't, I don't know what they look like. Now if you're a defense for South Carolina, after you think that you get the turnover, you got to stand up on third downs. As we mentioned, Troy has victimized this defense repeatedly on third downs. First charge time I want to have Troy. This will be a 30 second timeout. Williams Price Stadium, cocky. Everybody else here shaking their head at the call that was overturned just a moment ago, not giving Jamar Brown credit for the interception, trying to shake it off as Troy has been sensational on third down today. They're five of eight. Off the back foot, another strike to Todd. Boy, Taylor Powell has been so accurate. He's not even stepping into those throws because of his left knee injury stench. And he's firing bullets each time. That one for 10 more. Uh, and, the, and the fact that he's got pressure right in his face as he's unloading this ball once again and throwing strikes. That time completed in front of Marcellus Dial. And Taylor Powell has been clutch on third downs. Here come the Gamecocks. Almost picked off again as Jordan Strawn got both hands on it. Second down. We've seen a couple of tipped balls in this game at the line of scrimmage. If you're on offense, you hold your collective breath. Whenever you get balls tipped right in the middle, oh, wow. Strawn almost could have made that interception. Would have been a heck of a play. Regardless, get that pass broken up. He's been a big pickup for Clayton White's defense. He led the nation in sacks at Georgia State last year with 10 and a half and is added to a terrific defensive front for the Gamecocks. Jamontez Woods moves to Powell's left and runs straight ahead. And this sets up another third and manageable for Taylor Powell, who, as I've been saying, Stench is nursing a left knee injury. He's wearing a protective sleeve on that left knee and watching him in warm-ups he was going maybe at 30 percent as he was running around and hasn't stepped into almost any of these throws but the arm sure has been accurate and he's done a good job of managing that pocket either standing in or sliding just a few feet to the left or right to avoid the rush just to afford him enough time to deliver he's been six of seven passing on third downs Pocket collapses, he gets it off, and it looks like it was caught by Billingsley, but it's going to be a loss on the play. Inigbari was in the backfield with Powell. It's fourth down. It would have been better served just letting that one fall incomplete. 
But that time, South Carolina, the rush able to get home, did a good job of collapsing that right side of the Troy offensive front. Just got done talking about Taylor Powell, how he had managed it well. That time, nowhere to go with the ball downfield. He was just trying to check it down. Key stop for the Carolina defense. They get the ball back. Might end up being close to where they would have gotten it had that interception stood. Magliozzi had it blocked last time. He gets this one off. And Amari and Brown muffs it. And Troy's got the football. Off the carom, it's Cameron Kay, the long snapper, who recovers it. Brown misjudged this ball. You see him late. He signals for the fair catch very late. And then tries to rally. See that late signal, here comes the ball. And he's short of that football all the way. Now the question is, did he ever make contact with it? He clearly thought he did. Yeah, he see, acted like he did. He ran up after it. Remember, Josh Van is the normal punt returner for South Carolina, but because of that groin injury, he's limited today. He's only played in a handful of offensive plays and he's not returning punts. So Brown pressed into duty, muffs it. And now Troy begins this possession inside the Gamecocks red yeah. zone. That last look at it, looked like it hit his left hand. Powell sidearms it, and it's Deuncray Lewis. Doesn't get much. Another hit on the quarterback, clean hit. The South Carolina defense, a shot on Powell. Second and eight, one of the better first downs. You see, that's one of the biggest challenges. As you see, Marion Brown dejected on the sidelines. The key miscue in special teams. Smith lost the ball, got it back. But because of his inability to get the ball cleanly, he's not going to get anything. Damani Staley there for the tackle. <laughs> Troy is so fortunate to maintain possession of this ball. Yeah, that ball, the ball handling was off from the get-go on that one. That ball was almost thrown to the defense. Chip Lindsey says, forget about it. Let's go switch sides and take the lead in the fourth quarter. What a game we have at williams Bryce Stadium. Big turnover for the Gamecocks puts Troy in South Carolina's red zone, down six. A beautiful day for a football game. Look at that bottom graphic right there. Chip Lindsey's team has never led in the three seasons They've never come back to win in the three seasons he's been the head coach when they've trailed going into the fourth quarter. It's a third and nine, 18 yards away from the Gamecocks end zone, down six. Taylor Powell has been gutty at quarterback. He's in trouble and he loses the football. Jalen Foster created it. It's picked up off the carom and now it's dropped again. But no, they'll say it's whistled down. They're going to let the play continue. Jamar Brown goes into the end zone, but one official was saying the football was down. We'll see what the call is. If it stands, it's a 58 yard fumble recovery for Jamar Brown. Well, you had to know Jamar Brown was going to be involved, right? If he's not blocking punts or coming up with would-be picks, Jalen Foster in there, that ball's definitely out. Taylor Powell was throwing what they would say is an empty hand. Look at this hand coming forward. The ball is out before it comes forward. That's a fumble. Great pressure by Jalen Foster. We talked about his play around the line of scrimmage. They never possessed that football right there anyway before going to the ground as Damani Staley goes And he's down. losing. Staley's losing the ball there. I think this might stand.
Holy cow, wow. we've got a lot of things to look at here. First, they'll confirm whether or not it's a fumble recovery. Brown absolutely gets rid of the football before he scores. So you're, you're thinking here, you confirm that it's a fumble, which I believe they'll do. Foster creates the fumble. Yes, Staley, on Powell, right? Yes. Yes, initially. Staley picks up the football. He's running free. He fumbles the ball. Seemingly. He was, he, he was not down. He fumbled the ball. Then Brown picked it up and ran 58 yards and tossed it away at the one-yard line. At the very least, it's Carolina ball. The question is, where? And it's somewhere in the field of play. Well, let's go through this again. Foster tries to grab it. Ultimately, Staley does. He does fumble right there. Yeah, yeah that ball's coming out. And then watch this. Now, Brown. This is, by the way, this is inexplicable right here. It makes no sense. You fight, scratch, claw to get your hands on the ball, and then you can't wait to ditch it. He definitely loses possession of that ball. Now, where is it, and where does the fumble end up? And the ball went out of bounds, they're saying. And this will be, that ball looks like it's out by Staley. It's out before his knee comes down. That ball's out. That ball's out. Now that shows his knee is being down. The ball's already coming out. That's a really good look at it. The ball's coming out before his left knee is down right there. And with Jamar. And this, and this is this is what's crazy. This ball goes out of the back of the end zone. It's a touchback. That was exactly right. Which means it's Troy Ball. You can argue all you want on the sideline. But he clearly flips that ball up before he crosses the goal line. That ball goes out of the back of the end zone, unless they're looking to see if Damani Staley hadn't fumbled let's, it. Let's That's listen to the did. call here. After review, number eight released the ball prior to crossing the goal line. The ball subsequently rolled into and out of the end zone, resulting in a touchback for Troy. First down. Well, that's what everybody's thinking. You have a, an incredulous look from Jamar Brown, and it's like you can't carry that ball another yard. You can't get rid of it fast enough. You know, there was a, it was a couple seasons ago where this was like epidemic in college football, where guys just, as they're crossing the goal line, flipping the ball away. It makes no sense. And you make a great play, a couple of great plays, and then just throw it away at the tail end. Now you gain field position, but you're talking about taking points off the board off of what was a fantastic play on third down by Jalen Foster. If your head is spinning, you're not alone. Jamar Brown, we thought had an interception. He was overturned on the field. And Troy kept the football, got inside the South Carolina 20. Then after this fumble and recovery and run down to the one yard line, basically Taylor Powell's Troy Trojan offense lost about 60 yards of field position, but they get a fresh set of downs. Exactly, yep. And you're sitting there, a gift by the South Carolina defense that generated yet another takeaway, but one this time that didn't even result in their maintaining possession. Smith finds a hole and gets eight yards. And it is Jamar Brown on the tackle. In this half, B.J. Smith has done a great job of opening up drives, opening up these fresh sets of downs, first downs, running the football. He's second and short. 
you chip Lindsay and you're sitting there, I've got my whole playbook available. I can take a shot right here. Smith, nice hesitation move, and it's a first down run. And again, he's the backup tailback in 2021. He was the starter for several years for Chip Lindsey and the Trojans. He actually was the starting tailback for the previous head coaching staff, Neil Brown, back in 2018. But Kamani Vidal has come in, the freshman, and run well so far this year. But he's not playing today with a foot issue. And Smith is certainly running like a starter again. Lasso down there by MJ Webb, who got a hand on his jersey. And if you're South Carolina defensively now, you have to regroup once again. So you think you get a, a, an interception, you don't. And then you think you get a, a sack, strip, fumble, fumble recurrent for a touchdown, except you don't. And mentally, you have to find a way to regroup and slow down this offense, get the ball back to your offense, and see if you can't maintain field position. Troy's done a great job of trying to get ahead in the down and distance. Powell pumps and throws, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Jabri Barber. Enigbari has been in the backfield all day. He got pressure again on Powell. He went on first down, you throw it on second down, and Enigbari got in there late. You see those hands on his hips? Been out there a lot. You go right back out there with the touchback. Can South Carolina affect the passer? We talked about it all, all day. Taylor Powell's been lethal. Sir Big Spur, he don't know what to do. He looks like he wants to come onto the field. Powell incomplete. Threw it too tall for Barber. Fourth down. Almost looked like that ball got tipped at the line of scrimmage. It didn't. Came out clean. Just too hot for Barber, who's got to come up with that catch for his quarterback. A little hot, a little high. Hit both, hit both your hands as a true freshman to make the catch. Josh Van back out on the field despite the groin injury is out there after Amari and Brown muffed the punt last time. All kinds of crazy things have happened when Magliozzi's been on the field to punt. Gets this one off cleanly. It's a terrific one that takes Van back to the 21-yard line. There is a flag down, and Josh is out of bounds at the 23. It's definitely been a special teams adventure here in the second half. During the kick, holding, number 17. This penalty is enforced 10 yards from the end of the kick. After enforcement, it will be first down. Shane Beamer's Gamecocks holding on for dear life in the fourth quarter. Well, there have been some key plays here in the second half. The and we thought might have been a interception, was overruled, said it was an incomplete pass. Then a muffed punt. Troy recovers, gets a short field, and on a safety blitz from the edge, they get a sack strip fumble. Damani Staley ends up with it. He fumbles. Brown ends up with it, flips the football before he enters the end zone on what was a certain touchdown, results in a touchback. Gamecock defense stops. Doty gets back to work. A nice ball thrown to Kevin Harris out to the 30-yard line. So what's that Gamecock sideline like, Alyssa? Yeah, Taylor, you just used the phrase back to work. That's basically what it looked like. I took a couple of paces up and down the sidelines, and everybody was just still being active. Not a lot of sitting around. I didn't get a sense of doom and gloom, specifically Luke Doty, Zeb Nolan, Jason Brown, and DK Joyner also warming up with the QBs. Maybe we'll see him soon. Interesting. And end around to Van. Seen this once before. And Josh gets a first down again with it out near midfield. 
18 more for Van. Nice block out front. Jazz to turn a team up front. The guy that subbed in late last week at left tackle, in there at left tackle now. A little bit of a different look in the backfield that time. Two backs, split backfield set, and end up flipping it to Josh Van. Van stays on the field on this first and 10. He hasn't played many consecutive reps because of that tweaked groin, but they need their best playmaker in the fourth quarter. Handoff goes to Juju McDowell, and McDowell's tripped up Carlton Marshall right there. Number two for Troy can play ball. This guy, undersized, 5'9", only 210 pounds. What a fantastic play. Just a quick diagnosis, gets upfield right now. No one lays a finger on him, and he gets a tackle for loss. Lightly recruited from McGill Tulin High School, Vince Dooley's high school, by the way, Stitch. Not that legendary. Negative yardage play, backs up the Gamecock offense. Limit your play call on second down. Through the whole route tree, McDowell had that football three different times before he finally caught it, getting into Troy territory, and a couple of Trojans fought him all the way to the end, including Will Cholo. Well, I know what the running backs room is going to work on this week, because they have not caught these balls cleanly out of the backfield all game long. See Juju McDowell juggles this one. Lucky a defender didn't arrive even sooner. We've seen that on a number of occasions, and I didn't see anything too extracurricular right there. It's just a finish to the play. Another third and long. Gamecocks have struggled today. Three of ten. Conversely, Troy's been 50%. Doty, the ball's out, and then Troy's got it. Richard Jubinor landed on that football after he punched it out. We talked about Jubinor in the first half. Just an individual effort. Wins right now. Watch him versus Dylan Wadham. He gets a chop. Gets his hand on Luke Doty on his throwing hand. That ball came out. Let's we'll take a look and see. If that hand had any chance of going forward, didn't look like it did. The second sack strip fumble that we've seen in this game. We talked about this earlier. Troy getting the transfers from Auburn, Iowa, NC State. All those guys have contributed today. And another short field for the Trojans, Jamontez Wood. Woods is bottled up by Ellis. It's another tackle for loss for the Gamecocks. We came into this game, Taylor, talking about this defense for Troy. They're undersized, but gosh, they make plays and find ways to back you up. Three sacks, six tackles for loss in this game. And none bigger than a one possession game and a chance to tie it up with a score and go ahead with a point after. Short field off of that sack strip fumble and recovery by Jubinor. Four receivers out there for Powell. And it's a short completion to Luke Whittemore. Have not called his name much today. The junior from Gainesville, Florida, to be third down for the Trojans. And the re one of the reasons Troy is still in this game is because of what they've been able to do on this down all day. It's been key. I and mean, then you look at what they've done at 50%. This will be their 13th third down try. They've converted six. And it's largely been on the arm of Taylor Powell. Caught by, as Todd dropped it at the end and the Gamecocks jump on it. Looks like Troy got it. For a second there, it looked like the Gamecocks had it in their hands. Did it change possessions again down there? That's the question. It did. 
You know what those piles are like, Stinch. Well, piles are crazy places. Is the ball out? It's hard to tell right there if that ball was out before his left elbow was down. Doesn't look like they're looking at it. Zach Pickens gets credit for the recovery. Gamecocks get it back. Yeah. Huh? Sorry, this is just downright nutty. What we're watching here in Columbia, South Carolina. You're going to see Jalen Foster so come in. It's a fumble recovered by South Carolina. The previous play is under further review. Reggie Todd has it. Jalen Foster tears it out. And eventually, Zach Pickens is given credit for recovering this fumble. He's at the top of the screen. He doesn't have the football right now, but you still have flashbacks about those piles. Pickens and a Troy player. Wow. Jabri Barber I, both come out of the pile with it and they give it to Pickens. I, I don't know how you determine who had more possession of that ball. Pickens had his arm underneath Barber's arm. And they're still trying to confirm who recovered the football. We've seen several calls overturned on the field so far today. And we've got another call coming in in just a second. After review, the rule on the field stands. First down, South Carolina. Wow. I mean, that's, you know, they're saying you can't confirm you know, overturning that. It was determined on the field that Pickens recovered it, but. You know, both those guys stood up. They both had their arms around the football. Now, certainly some of the officials could have seen Pickens with the football before Barber may have gotten it when they both got up. We we didn't have access to that, but the piles are crazy. Piles, piles are, are crazy. crazy places. And when there's a loose ball, it is pandemonium underneath there. It's the Hunger Games are based on what happens in piles when there's a loose ball. <laughs> what you say during the break, Lord of the Flies? Lord of the Flies, man. This game of Survivor. I don't know how anyone would describe this game so far. Head scratching would be one way. Nick Muse gets in the action and gets wrestled to the bench. That's a pickup of 12. It is a first down for the Gamecocks up at the 40. We've seen how the substitution, so they're slowing them down a little bit. At the end of the play, fans wanted a face mask, just a high tackle. No face mask involved. Doty, quick throw to Brooks. And Jalen will get a couple. There have been some parts of this game since you're kind of like a junior high basketball game where you just have turnover after turnover after turnover and you just <laughs> never know who has possession of the football. Yeah, yeah, who's going to get a shot off? As you can see South Carolina, with the sense of urgency to over the football quicker. This is a team that still huddles at times. They're not snapping it quickly, but they're ready to. Harris patiently waits and gets a first down into Troy territory. That's what Kevin Harris does best. Get a couple of pullers in front of him, designate a point of attack. They talked about he's getting better with that zone blocking scheme, being patient. But those are the type of runs he had last year. You give him a landmark and let him go run through it. No block play that time up front by the Gamecock offensive front. Gamecocks have the luxury of using four different tailbacks, all of which should be fresh. It's Harris again, spinning down to the 41 yard line you're starting to see signs of why this guy led the conference in rushing last year well he's kind of you know, coming off a of back surgery so he was delayed there new coaching staff and then he gets hit with covid that slows him down the coaches are saying he's just now getting his legs underneath and they need him to the ground game has been largely absent throughout this contest for south carolina even with this drive 
Only 87 yards. You know, Shane Beamer said that this isn't really October for Harris. It's more like August. Doty moves the pocket again against his body. Good ball to Van. First down, Gamecocks inside the 35. So Doty does, he just does such a good job of throwing on the run. When you think back to the touchdown throw he had, E.J. Jenkins, I think it cleans it up for him, more comfortable outside the pocket than in at times. Keep using that play clock, it's only at 15 right now. Doty, incomplete to the bench. Second down, clock stops with 5.25 to go. It's Saturday, time to represent your school. Show us how big you're going today. Submit your best fan video this weekend to hashtag show your Saturday, and you might just get your 15 seconds of fan fame. Alabama whipping Ole Miss today. Georgia crushing Arkansas. Florida with the early lead on Kentucky. This has been the game of the day in the SEC. Definitely the closest. We have Tennessee dunking on Missouri. Interesting to see what the balance of the day brings with some of these other SEC matchups. South Carolina clinging to a lead here. Back to the ground with Harris. Great cut. Down to the 27-yard line. And it may not be pretty, but it's so effective just how poised Harris is as a runner. So I'll talk about the man scheme early, the point of attack, but this is the wide zone. And you can see him, it's subtle, right? It doesn't, it's not a heavy cutback. You just put your foot in the ground, you get north-south right now. So that time, Troy, from the second and third level, they committed outside. He sees that color, puts his foot in the ground, and gets right upfield. It's a nice run by Kevin Harris in the wide zone scheme. Do they go to Harris again on a third and four as Van was there in motion? They dump it off to Josh, and he's out of bounds inside the 20. They load it up, heavy horse, heavy formation. Everybody's in tight. And it looked like Troy had the ideal defense called up. He's got pressure right now, except you don't have anybody out wide. Josh Van, and, you know, he's thinking, hey man, you might try to tackle me low. The defender stayed up high regardless. Enough to pick up the conversion. Great play call by the offensive coordinator, yeah. Marcus Satterfield. And as you said, to deep the defense there, and the clock still runs as they go back to Harris again, and Josh doesn't get much this time. And Chip Lindsey has two timeouts left. And it's stopped with 3.56 to go. The time again, the whistle came in there, and a defender lost his helmet. As you see Marcus Satterfield. It's been very up and down. It's been a real challenge, actually, offensively for them. And it's today's been a microcosm of that, taking turns. Antonio Showers had his helmet ripped off. That's why the clock stopped momentarily, but it starts winding again. And Troy does have two timeouts left. It's Harris standing next to Doty with 10 left on the play clock. And it's Bell in front of Harris. And it dropped by Doty, picks it up. And Harris is going to lose a yard or two. It's just going to say, you get in the red zone, no penalties, no negative yardage plays. And they're on that red zone fringe, first things first. Ball handling miscue. He was trying to reverse out right now. I think they're trying to get the ball to Jaheim Bell as the fullback right there, as a quick hitter right downfield, downhill. And instead, he ends up having to flip it out wide. They had ball handling miscue last week versus Kentucky. Gamecocks look like they're just going to let the play clock run down and take a time timeout.
2.35 left. Gamecocks trying to take a two possession lead. You see football final is back, hosted by Dari Noko with Gene Chizik and Chris Doring. They'll take you through the biggest stories of the day and break all the games down. 10 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Big Spurs like, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I just, did a rooster have a heart attack? I just got to take a lot of stress. I just got a text from a Gamecocks fan who said, this is terrible for my health. Third and 14, Juju McDowell in the backfield. Troy has two timeouts left. Juju doesn't get much. And a flag comes in at the end of the play as Zion Williams makes the tackle. It's going to be a holding penalty, I think, on Jalen Brooks. You got to take that yardage, right, to make it a longer field goal for Parker White? You, you think. We just got, look, or, Lily, or perhaps even a, a block in the back. What would we just say, though? You get in the red zone. You don't want to go backwards. No negative yards placed, no penalties. That's what Chip Lindsey is over there saying now. What's the penalty? What will be the yardage? Yeah, move them back. How about a field goal to make it a two-possession game here? And you've done nothing but go backwards go as soon as you hit the twin. Back. Offense, number three. This is a 10-yard penalty enforced from the pre-spot, third down. And what a great call by Brandon Hall to trigger that edge pressure. Coming from the boundary, Troy triggers is elected it. to have the game clock start on the snap. Jalen Brooks ends up with the illegal block, backs him up. That is one of the unusual things about football is even though South Carolina committed the penalty, the clock typically would wind, but since there was a dead ball, it'll stay at 231 since a timeout was used by the Gamecocks on the pre previous play. And McDowell with a burst of speed, yeah. he gets inside the 20 down near the 18 yard line. This is a much more manageable field goal for Parker White now. Second charge timeout of the half, Troy. This is the second charge timeout. Parker White will be trying to put this game on ice when we come back. God. Shane Beamer and Chip Lindsey have pulled out any hair they had left during this game today. Parker White is coming onto the field to attempt this field goal. And you see he's been perfect on the season. 17 of 17 kicking a football. Nine of nine extra points. Eight of eight kicking field goals. This from 37 yards to give the Gamecocks a nine-point cushion. Money. Well, when you have an offense that has been sputtering all season, what an extra tool it is to have Parker White kicking your field goals and being automatic. Quite the luxury, to say the least. Look at him, he's congratulated by his teammates. And that drive, great job on the ground running the football that time. I hadn't seen it most of the game, but there's been some key plays in this one. Yeah, take us through this, Stitch. This has been wacky sure, in the second half. Easy. This is a pretty linear sequence of events. You know, Jamar Brown, interception overturned. Then you get a muffed punt. Then you get Jalen Foster forcing a fumble. Damani Staley gets it. He fumbles. Jamar Brown again gets the ball, doesn't want to score. Rather get rid of the football before he crosses the end line. Ends up being a touchback just to keep it interesting because it was getting boring, I guess. Then you get another forced fumble, somewhat controversial, awarding the football to South Carolina. Zach Pickens in there, Barber in there fighting for the football. The officials on the field determined that it was South Carolina ball led to that field goal by Parker White that we just saw. Boy, it's been a long afternoon for Shane Beamer. That hair's getting grayer. That 
Head shaking. Heavy breathing. But Feels this- better now. Gamecocks with a nine-point cushion. With 2.20 to go, Troy just has one timeout left. You know, Alyssa Lang went to school here. I can't imagine what her messages are like right now. Just yeah. the You're not kidding. Ups and downs of this football game. Reggie Todd, the receiver at the bottom of your screen. He takes it, gets out of bounds at the 30. Guys, you were just talking about Shane Beamer and all that energy. I talked to Jabari Ellis earlier this week, and I said, well, where does Coach get all that energy from? He said, I'll never forget the first time I walked into the strength room at 6 a.m. and Coach was in there doing our workouts. That's where he gets it from. He's got plenty of it as they go underneath the Smith. Well, that, those kind of plays take up a lot of time, and Troy needs to score twice. And there's an injury to an offensive lineman. Jake Andrews is still down. Jake's the big right guard from Millbrook, Alabama. Fans didn't like that, thinking he's trying to stop the clock. You don't do that with offensive linemen very often. If anything, when teams are gaming that a little bit, it's with the skill positions. You can sub them in, sub them back off. He's not putting any weight on that right leg. Let's take a look at the MVP of the game brought to you by Sport Clips. This guy had four interceptions coming into the game. Instead of picking them off today, he's been stripping them instead. Look at the tackles. 11 solo tackles. A sack, forced fumbles, two of them. The guy that came into this game, leading tackler, and as you mentioned, tied for the lead with picks. Smith right at the marker where David Spaulding made the tackle. They do give the Trojans a first down, but again, these plays are taking a long time as the chains move. Sideline ball caught by Johnson but just gets a couple. Johnson a little bit shaken up after that last completion. Keeping in mind, we've got a backup, that right guard, obvious passing downs. Probably not gonna bring a lot of pressure here, but you can win some one-on-ones in the pass rush. They do bring pressure. Powell on a slant, good ball to Barber, and he's into Gamecocks territory. You know, for a guy in Powell who clearly is nursing a a left knee injury and really can't throw the football deep down the field, he is one tough cookie. These are the kind of passes he's been completing the entire game. A.J. Lewis grabs that one. Somewhat a plodding pace from Troy offensively. Surprised there's not more sense of urgency. Their catch, but it's a short one to Barber, and good tackle made by Brown. You see, uh, under a minute, you don't want to be in panic mode at the same time. E.J. Smith plows into the defense, and it looks like he got enough. Moving the sticks. Clock will restart once the chains are set. Under 40 seconds left. Intercepted. Off the carom. It goes to Damani Staley. And the Gamecocks will put this one away. In a game of possession swings, makes sense that it would end that way. Fumbles, muffed punts, blocked punts, seven fumbles, two interceptions in this game. That time Powell 
He was just trying to get it to Smith out of the backfield, the easy completion over the middle. Damani Staley's had his hands on the ball before, keeps it this time. Offensive coordinator Marcus Satterfield told us yesterday that there is a lot of scar tissue around here. So much losing, the firings to the last staff, dealing with COVID like we all have. You can see it. But the fact that Shane Beamer's Gamecocks are fighting through it and winning football games is a testament to Beamer and his coaching staff. They improved to three and two with the victory over Troy today. You have to think every win counts given that scenario. Every time you're able to escape with victory, it's a huge plus, it's a step in the right direction. There is a lot to clean up for South Carolina, but you always want to coach from a win, not from a loss, and Gamecocks were able to get it done. They'll be in Knoxville next Saturday at noon Eastern on ESPN2. Thanks to Tim Sullivan and our entire production team, for Kevin Maloney, for Russ Moore up here in the booth, and for Alyssa Lang and Matt Stinchcomb. I'm Taylor Zarzer, Shane Beamer's Gamecocks get the win. Back to Dari Noka in the studio.